Sealmaster presents On the Pavement, featuring the Crack Pro 125 heated hose machine. Good morning guys, Garrett Knoll here with Seal Master Equipment. Today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite machines, the Crack Pro 125 heated hose machine. Before we get going with some of the features, we wanted to explain to you that there are two versions available of this machine. The first one is the CP or the Crack Pro 125D, which just gets you a 14 horsepower diesel Kubota engine. However, this unit right behind me is our Crack Pro 125DA, which, which features our upgraded 33 and a half horsepower diesel Kubota engine and also our 100 CFM air compressor, which is the largest volume output in the industry. Prior to getting started on some of the features on our CP125, we also wanted to mention to you that this video will have a lot of crossover with the CP260 units. We do offer a 125 gallon capacity, which is this unit here, and also a 260 gallon capacity. We wanted to let you know that the safety features the operations, the functionality of this unit will cross over between the CP125 and the CP260 heated hose units. At the heart of our CP125 heated hose machine is the 33 and a half horsepower diesel Kubota engine, which does directly drive our 100 CFM air compressor. The 100 CFM air compressor is the largest compressor in the industry. Guys, the reason we install a 100 CFM air compressor on this unit is because the volume of air will quickly and efficiently clean out any cracks that you may have prior to application. And along with our 100 CFM compressor, we also feature the longest hose in the industry at 100 feet, 3 quarter inches in diameter. And this comes on a retractable hose reel. Very nice. Pull it back, give it a rip, and this wheel will spin and reel your hose up nice and quick. Attached to our 100 foot hose via Chicago coupling is our air lance, which is physically used to clean out your cracks. This wand will push 100 CFMs at 120 PSI. This unit features our safety breakaway system. In the event that this trailer separates from the lead vehicle, you have a battery powered and battery charged braking system that will engage the trailer brakes on this unit and prevent it from jumping to another lane and should hopefully bring the unit to a complete stop. The breakaway actuator or box has a push to test function. In here there is a green indicator light and if I push to test I will get a fully charged. You always want to make sure you're testing this as you're hooking it up to your lead vehicle. We have a standard seven pin connection. And when you do have this plugged into the lead vehicle, we are charging the battery, drawing amperage from our lead vehicle, charging the battery that will actuate your safety brakes. And we also have the cable, which needs to be attached to your lead vehicle. And upon separation, this will pull and engage the switch, which will essentially engage your safety brakes. Guys, let's just give you a quick breakdown of all the components on our 33 horsepower Kubota engine. Starting with our fuel water separator, we have our hydraulic pump, which is directly mounted to the engine, provides power to all the hydraulic functions on the unit. We have our AC power generator. We have our inline fuel filter, air filter housing, alternator, muffler, and right here is our throttle cable. And as always guys, all of our Seal Master equipment is outfitted with an identification plate that includes month and year of manufacture. And located here at the front of the machine right near our diesel tank is our 12 volt battery. As you can see, we have put it in a place on this machine where it is nice and accessible if you ever need to put a charge or if you ever need to change this out for new. 
This machine is complete with a 30 gallon diesel fuel tank which provides fuel to both our Kubota diesel engine and our diesel burner. We have elected to use a single fuel source on this machine which provides maximum safety and performance. Regarding our diesel tank, we have provided you with a level sight gauge and also a master fuel shutoff valve. All of our Crack Pro units across the board feature torsion style axles. This particular unit has a torsion style 6,000 pound capacity single axle with radial tires. The reason we're using torsion style axle assemblies is because it gives us two or three additional inches of height which is required at the rear of the machine at the bulk discharge valve for filling any mobile applicator hot pour crack filling tools you may have. Continuing on with our features on the CP125 heated hose machine, we wanted to show you the recirculation box for our heated wand. We have our heated hose assembly, the heated hose wand handle, we also have our trigger, we have a protective sleeve and wiring loom which is used to heat the hose. And we're going to pull this hose out and show you some more features in just a sec. Guys, prior to getting into the specifics of the heated hose and the wand itself, we wanted to just give you a quick run through of the proper procedures of removing the hose from the machine, swinging the boom out. Let's walk through those step by step right now. So if I'm going to swing this hose out, the first thing I'm going to do is open my recirculation box. I'm going to remove the heated hose from its cradle. I'm going to come over to my boom lock, I'm going to raise it, and there's a little slot, I'm just going to turn it 90 degrees to the right and completely disengage my boom, which is essentially putting in what we call travel mode. At this point in time, I'm going to grab my boom and swing it out. Now in an effort to not kink or twist the heating elements inside the hose, we want to make sure we're pulling the hose out and turning back inside and walking underneath the boom. Guys, we just wanted to give you a quick reminder in regards to the heated hose. It is really important that we don't remove a cold hose from the machine. Earlier we brought this machine up to temperature and my heated hose is hot at this moment. When you are removing this hose from the machine, it is important that it be up to temperature or else you run the risk of damaging your heating elements. Guys, let's go ahead and talk about some of the features of our heated hose wand. Remember, this is a standard 18 foot hose and wand assembly and we can option you into an upgraded 22 foot long heated hose. On the actual wand itself, we have our applicating shoe, we have our wand tube, our adjusting handle, we have our switch wires here, and on the actual grip we have our material switch and our signaling horn switch with our thumb, which is to signal our driver to either move forward, stop, or back up. We also wanted to mention to you that this heated hose and wand assembly is the lightest available in the industry, which will help reduce operator fatigue throughout the day. Guys, like we mentioned to you, due to the heating elements in this heated hose, we want to make sure we're showing you the proper way to put this hose back in its storage rack on the machine, okay? We always want to make sure before we store the unit that we're not twisting these heating elements inside the hose. So I always want to make sure I'm turning to the inside. First thing I'm going to do is put my applicator shoe back in the recirculation box. Then I'm safe to drop the machine in the rack and swing the door. At this point in time, I can close my recirculation box. I'm going to pull the pin on my boom and I'm safe to step back and lock my boom in place. Hose in the cradle. We did it with no twists. All your heating elements are safe. We'll be ready to go tomorrow morning. 
At this point, guys, you might be wondering, what are the advantages of a heated hose unit versus a non-heated hose machine? Our CP125 heated hose machine is going to greatly reduce your risk for material plugs or clogs in the hose and we're also going to provide a more smooth and pliable product to apply which is going to result in less operator fatigue and greater uptimes. Here we are at the back of the CP125 heated hose machine and we wanted to talk to you about our heated and insulated material pump box Unlike some other machines in the industry where the pump is located inside the material tank, our unit features an external material pump design for ease of maintenance. Any maintenance requirements you may have, simply unbolt this panel. That exposes your pump completely and you can do any type of maintenance or change outs required. One additional feature we wanted to mention is our master material shutoff valve located here at the rear of the machine. If at any point in time you need to service your material pump, it is important that you completely turn off or close your master material valve. Once my valve is closed, I have completely shut off the flow of material through my pump and ultimately to my heated hose. Please keep in mind, with your master material valve closed, you will still get material through your bulk discharge valve at the rear of the machine because it is a separate gravity flow line. Also located here at the rear of the machine is our hydraulic motor, which directly drives our material pump. We also have a very important hydraulic manifold, which does include our agitator speed control and our material pump speed control feature. Here we are at the rear of the machine, guys, where some of your most important controls for operation are located. We're gonna start working top to bottom here, and I wanted to cover with you our easy access, easy sight gauges that are located here. These are up here for your operator for a quick glance view. And what we have here is a gauge that is reading out our material temperature inside our material tank. And we've also got our transfer oil temperature gauge, and these are the corresponding sensors. I'm gonna reach down and flip open our master control panel. We have three digital readout temperature controls that have factory preset values. From left to right, you have your transfer oil, you have your material temperature, and you have your heated hose temperature. When I go to operate the control panel, the first thing I want to do is reach down here and flick on my main power switch in the bottom left hand corner. Once that is done, I'm safe to flick on my AC power, which is used for heating our heated hose assembly. We also have a switch for your material pump forward and reverse, which we'll get into a little bit later when we're operating the machine. We also have your agitator control forward and reverse switch. Okay. On the, in the bottom row, we have our burner enable indicator light, which will be illuminated when the diesel burner is actually fired. We have a burner failure indicator in case of any failure. Once the material has settled back down to a, to a proper temperature, we will have to hit this high temp reset button to re-engage the diesel burner. And we also have the interlocks light in the bottom right hand corner. When this light is illuminated, we can safely flick on our hydraulic agitation and our material pump and safely pump material through the system. We wanted to mention to you that the interlocks light, once it is illuminated, if our agitator is in a forward or reverse position, the agitation will automatically start turning once our interlocks light is illuminated. And when that light is on, what it is telling us is that all three of our factory preset values have been met. We also wanted to touch on our limit switch for stopping the agitation when I open my loading door. As you can see, when I open my door, I have disengaged my loading switch and my agitation has completely shut down. This is to reduce any splatter. Remember, we've got 350, 400 degree material in there. We are trying to reduce as much splatter as we can coming back out. 
And we also at this point in time wanted to mention the low profile design of this machine. As you can see, my material load door, my material load height is here, a little lower than shoulder height. And with the low profile, I have a full 360 degree view of my work area. As we mentioned previously, this is an oil jacketed style melting kettle. Located on top of your material tank, we have an expansion tank for your heat transfer oil. The expansion tank is complete with a level checking dipstick. We also wanted to mention that it is safe to use either direct fire or non-direct fire material in this melting kettle. One of the other main advantages of an oil jacketed kettle is it hangs on to that residual heat so much longer and dramatically reduces our heat up times in the morning, which means we're spending more time filling cracks and less time waiting for material to heat up. CP125, CP260, fastest heat up times in the industry. Located right here behind our 100 CFM air compressor is our 30 gallon capacity hydraulic oil tank. We do have a sight gauge. We have a master hydraulic shutoff valve. And located right behind the tank is our return hydraulic filter element. And we also wanted to mention to you that all of our seal master equipment across the board is using AW68 spec hydraulic oil. One of the most outstanding features on the CP125 heated hose unit is our 372,000 BTU diesel burner. It is one of the main reasons why we say we have the fastest heat up times in the industry and we are going to get into that diesel burner in a little bit more detail in the operations segment of this video. Another unique feature on this machine is our directly driven 100 CFM rotary vane air compressor. This unit is directly mounted and directly driven by our 33 and a half horsepower Kubota diesel engine and it is complete with an air pressure gauge. What makes this compressor unique is there is no storage tank for the air. This compressor is going to build air as you demand it, okay? So as you demand air through your crack cleaning wand, this compressor is going to build enough air to keep up with any requirements you may need. And as always, on all of our Seal Master machines, we have a plastic documentation case with all of your important books, operator's manuals, parts books and breakdowns, any other information you may need from a documentation standpoint is stored here. Located here at the front of the machine is our main control panel for engine startup and compressor function. Just real quick run through, we've got our engine hour meter. We have some indicator lights for battery amperage, diesel glow plugs, which will be important, we'll cover that later. We have engine oil, water temperature, and a couple other auxiliary engine sensors that we're monitoring. Ignition keys and ignition switch. And we also here, right next to our keys, have our compressor on off main valve. We wanted to give you some identifying parts. Out here, not connected to the actual burner itself, is your diesel wa uh, fuel water separating filter. On the actual diesel burner itself, on the left hand side, we have our diesel fuel pump. Up here down the middle, we have our igniter. Over here we have our primer control box, which is essentially the brains for the diesel burner and works in conjunction with our temperature sensors. And because this is a forced air system, down here bolted to the, on the right hand side is our fan motor. Okay guys, we have taken you through all the features of this machine. It's time to go ahead and walk you through the operation step by step. First things first, as always, we want to make sure we're wearing the proper safety protection. This unit gets extremely hot, hot to the touch. Anywhere, anywhere on the machine is, is a danger point. We want to make sure we have the proper heat insulated gloves and that we have our safety glasses. Let's go take a walk around. Let's check all of our fluids and filters, making sure we've got no leaks, making sure I'm safely attached to my truck. Let's go take a look. Okay, so we've completed our safety walk around. Everything looks good on this machine. We're wearing the proper safety protection. Let's go ahead and fire this unit up. First things first, we're going to turn our key to the right. I'm going to get a series of indicators. When the last three indicator lights have gone out, plus my glow plug indicator has gone out, I'm safe to start this engine.
Guys, once we've got our machine started up, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is walk back to your rear control panel, get everything fired up to, to engage our diesel burner. Let's start bringing this machine up to temperature. Once I flip open my control panel box, the first thing I want to do is to turn on my primary switch in the bottom left hand corner. This is going to give power to my control panel. Once I've turned on my main power source, I'm going to flick on my AC power. The AC power switch is essentially used to heat our heated hose assembly. Okay. Now I'm going to take a look at all my factory preset values. And all of these numbers are going to start coming up to temperature. Pretty soon you're going to hear the diesel burner engage. At that point in time, we're in a little bit of a waiting game until we've got our interlock light comes on and all of our preset values are met. Once I've got my control panel all powered up and I've flicked on my heated hose, my AC power switch, I'm going to reach over and flick my agitator over to forward. Also, I'm gonna take a look at my burner enable indicator, making sure the light is green. That means the burner, my diesel burner is fired and I am currently heating up my material. And also my interlock light will be illuminated once all my factory preset values have been met. And again, my agitator right now is not turning inside the tank and will not turn until my interlock light comes on, at which point the agitator will start turning automatically. We wanted to do a real quick review of the factory preset temperatures that are in your digital displays on your control panel. From left to right, my factory preset on the transfer oil is 475 degrees Fahrenheit. On my material, the factory preset value is 375 degrees Fahrenheit. And on my heated hose assembly, our factory preset is 350 degrees. One other thing we wanted to teach you guys was how to change the factory set value on your digital temperature display. If any time you need to change your green numbers, your set value, the first thing you're going to want to do is touch your arrow left button, at which time your number farthest to the right will start blinking. What you can do at that point is scroll through all your numbers. And let's take this one from 350, let's go up to 380. So I've arrowed up to 380. Now I've got the value that I want and I touch set and that will lock it in. Guys, let's review the safest possible way to load material in this machine. A couple things before we get started. Our Crackmaster material comes in 50 pound boxes, two 25 pound blocks a piece. This is one 25 pound block of material. Okay, and we also wanted to talk about our low profile machine and easy loading height. As you can see, I am just a little lower than shoulder height. I'm not reaching way up to load this machine. Okay, and this is our anti-splash loading door. And the only safe way to load material is to place a block on my loading door and I am simply going to close this all the way, let gravity take it all the way shut, and we are gonna prevent any splatter of that 375 degree material coming out back at you. We wanna demonstrate for you our 100 CFM compressor and our spray wand for cleaning out cracks prior to applying our hot pour crack fill. The first thing we wanna do is obviously start our engine and we always want to be running our compressor at full engine RPM, okay? We have already stretched our hose out all the way out front of our tow vehicle, and we're gonna demonstrate how that wand cleans cracks out for you. Okay guys, we've went ahead and laid out and taken advantage of our 100 foot air hose and wand assembly. We've laid it over our tow vehicle and he's gonna be following me as I demonstrate the air wand. We're gonna clean this crack out for you. Here we go 
video, our, our resident expert in Crack Pro, Dave Likens, is showing us the proper way to utilize our heated hose and wand. As you can see, he's taking advantage of the horn, waiting for the truck. He's going to bump that horn, tell his driver to move forward. Notice Dave never picks up the application shoe off the ground. He's just, he's just got a nice rhythm pumping the, the heated hose wand, just a nice trigger material. You never want to lay on the trigger. Just give it nice short bursts, find a nice little rhythm. Trying not to puddle the material. When we're all done, Dave's going to swing that boom closed, making sure we're not twisting the hose. He's going to walk back under the boom. Want to make sure we're taking good care of those heating elements. He's going to open up his recirculation box. He's going to drop the tip of the, of the heated hose wand into the recirc box. Close your latch. Close your latch. He's going to swing the boom. Drop your locking pin. Cradle your hose. We are good to go. Okay guys, we just want to give you the proper shutdown procedure. We just saw Dave uh, fill some cracks and we want to go through step-by-step -step shutdown procedure, how to draw material back out of your heated hose. And we can do that at our control panel right here. So once we've hung our hose back in our recirculation box, safely locked our boom in place, okay? What we're gonna do is come over to our control panel box and we're gonna flick our pump into reverse. As you can see, that pump is turning. Our motor's turning our pump, and what that's doing is pulling material back out of our heated hose. We only need to do that for 15, 20 seconds at the most. Then I can go ahead and turn my pump back off. Now I'm headed to the front of the machine. I'm gonna go ahead and idle the engine down. It's always good to let a diesel engine idle for a couple, three seconds before we turn the ignition off. Alright guys, so we've gone through all the special features of the CP125 machine. We've also ran through a complete operation from 100 CFM air compressor all the way through to completely fill in a crack. The last thing, we like to end every video with a recommended wares and spares list. This is anything that we think can render this machine down, whatever you would need to have on the shelf to get a guy back up and going, okay? I apologize, I'm going to read off a list, it's quite a long list here, so bear with me. What we wanted to start with was all of your engine maintenance and preventative maintenance filters, starting with your air filter, engine oil filter, diesel water separator, and inline fuel filter. Okay, that should take care of your engine. There's also a water separating filter on your diesel burner. And continuing with the diesel burner, we'd recommend that you have an additional nozzle and an additional primary in stock. We also have air filters on the compressor that we would recommend that you have. Also, the application shoe for the heated hose, the application shoe at the end, they tend to wear out pretty quickly. Plus your switches for your uh, material and your horn on the actual heated hose assembly, a couple of backup switches. Also your digital temperature display in your control panel. Remember we talked about the digital readouts. We would recommend that you have one of those digital temperature displays on the shelf, plus the 40 amp relays from your rear control panel. Also, some of our most common wear parts on this unit are the air wand tips. We, we would recommend you have a few of those on hand. Plus your high temp packing for your material pump at the rear of the machine. And last thing, we would recommend you have a complete heated hose assembly in stock. This is not a must, simply a recommendation. Whether you've got machines with 18 foot hoses or the uh, upgraded option of the 22 foot hose, whatever you guys have in the field, Maybe we want to think about having a complete heated hose assembly on, on the shelf and in stock ready to go at a moment's notice. Let's review the key features. This unit is an all diesel powered oil jacketed melter applicator with single fuel source. Both the burner and the engine are powered by diesel fuel for maximum safety, efficiency and performance. The 18 foot heated hose applicator is the lightest in the industry and features a horn trigger for communication with the lead vehicle. The heated hose assembly is also available in a 22 foot length. 
The CP125 and CP260 units feature the fastest material heat up time in the industry. State of the art electronically controlled diesel burner and material heating system has an automatic shutoff feature to prevent material from overheating. Our 372,000 BTU diesel burner is the largest in the industry. Material is melted and ready to apply within one hour. This machine has a low profile design for maximum operator safety and will help reduce fatigue during and after material loading. No splash safety loading door. Torsion suspension axle maintains enough machine height to allow easy filling of MA10 melter applicator. Liquid cooled 33.5 horsepower Kubota diesel engine. Direct drive full sweep material agitator for even, consistent material heating and mixing. Our 100 CFM air compressor comes standard on a DA unit and is the largest air compressor in the industry. The 100 CFM air compressor comes standard with 100 feet of air hose, which leads the industry in range and pressure rating. The battery-powered emergency braking system will automatically engage if the trailer is separated from the lead vehicle. The 125-gallon tank capacity can hold up to quantity 25 50-pound boxes of material. Variable speed hydraulic manifold with flow control for material pump and agitator speed. The CrackPro heated hose machines are available in 125-gallon and 260-gallon capacities. Available options for the CrackPro heated hose machine include 100 CFM air compressor with 100-foot reeled hose and wand for cleaning out cracks prior to sealing. This feature is standard on the DA unit. Material block conveyor system, lit aero board, engine security cover, toolbox, hydraulic surge brake assembly, liquid propane tank stand for use with heat lamps, crack sealing round shoe, crack sealing square shoe, fire extinguisher, and wand tips. For more information on this machine and all other Sealmaster equipment, contact your Sealmaster representative at 800-395-7325 or visit sealmaster.net.